Agniko Cosmos, an IIT Madras incubated space startup, has made history by launching the world's first rocket with a single piece 3D printed engine. Now, this achievement is a testament to the entirely indigenous design and development efforts. The rocket named Agniban Sorted, which basically stands for Suborbital Technology Demonstrator, also marks India's first semi cryogenic engine powered launch. Now, the rocket took off from Dhanush, also a first, India's first private launch pad established by Agnikul and the second company to do so after Skyroot Aerospace in 2022. This mission aimed to test in-house technologies, gather crucial flight data and ensure the optimal functioning of systems for Agniban's orbital launch vehicle. Now, unlike traditional sounding rockets that launch from guide rails, Agniban sorted lifted off vertically and followed a predetermined trajectory performing a precisely orchestrated set of maneuvers during its flight. Today's success launch after holding off four previous attempts was the culmination of thousands of hours of reviews and close coordination between Agnikul, InSpace and ISRO to design and build original space-worthy hardware in India. Now, founded in 2017 by Srinath Ravichandran, Moin SPM and Satya Chakravarti, Agnikul Cosmos became the first company in the country to sign an agreement with ISRO under the InSpace initiative in December of 2020. This agreement granted Agnikul access to ISRO's expertise and facilities to build Agniban. Our vision is really about making sure that going into space is as easy as going to any other point on Earth. It shouldn't be harder than that. Srinath Ravichandran told us this on Young Turks when we had them on in 2021. Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan and joining us on the program today to celebrate the launch of Agniban and talk about the future of India's space program. I'm joined by Srinath Ravichandran, the co-founder of Agnikul Cosmos and Pavan Goenka, the chairman of InSpace. Gentlemen, congratulations from all of us here on the Young Turks team. What a proud moment it is for you and your teams and, of course, for all of us as citizens of India. Uh, so, hearty congratulations. Before I get into the details of the launch, Srinath, to you first. At 7.50 a.m. this morning, uh, as you were preparing for the launch, given the fact that you've had four previous holes, so fifth, clearly a charm for you, what was going on in your mind at that point in time? Um, so at that point in time, I was just, uh, you know, waiting to see the actual flight happen because we've been waiting for all the other moments. Uh, you know, every other part of the countdown uh, went through well. So at that moment, I was just waiting for the actual flight to happen. And it was a very smooth liftoff. Uh, if you've seen some of the videos that uh, have been posted by ID Madras. Um, yeah, so after that, it was, it was just following the screens throughout, looking at where the engine chamber pressures were, what the latitude and longitude was tracking, and which is when I really started digesting the fact that, yes, we're actually flying. So, yeah, unbelievable moment. Uh, a lot of dreams uh, coming together today. Yes, uh, clearly a dream come true for so many of you and your team. Uh, Dr. Goenka, uh, the same question to you. You've, of course, been closely involved with the Agnikul team uh, and all the other space tech startups in the country. But for you to actually witness this launch event, take me through what was going on in your mind. Well, so in, uh, uh, good to talk to you. So first of all, let me say that I am honored to be sharing the screen today. Uh, with uh, Srinath, who is the hero of the day uh, for the country. So uh, let me say that uh, for Agnikul and for India, uh, this was really a very big achievement. Uh, as you said earlier, that it took uh, about five or six tries to get here, but that I don't think matters, because what matters is finally the team was resilient, was determined, uh, was focused on the goal, and today they succeeded uh, in the first mission that they have tried. What is going through my mind was, Fingers crossed, uh, because uh, we came so close uh, uh, three, four times before, and last time was just one second away uh, from starting the launch. So I was hoping that this time uh, we don't see any, any any difficulties and the launch goes off, and it did. 
Uh, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't go back to uh, uh, Sri Quota today. And therefore, I had to watch it uh, from my office in Ahmedabad. But it was uh, equally exciting to see that and see all the people cheer uh, and sort of abrupt after the launch in terms of uh, clapping that I saw and applaud that I saw. Yes, uh, I, so I, I, uh, really compliment to the team uh, in, in the way they have uh, pulled it through. Uh, I, would, I would imagine that uh, mission control centers both at ISRO as well as at the Agnikul uh, uh, you know, uh, premises would have erupted uh, as we saw that launch finally take off. But, you know, Srinath, I want to come back to you because there are several firsts that are being attributed to the specific launch. It's India's first rocket launch from a private launch pad. It's India's first semi-cryogenic engine-powered rocket launch. It's the world's first single-piece 3D printed engine. Now, uh, you know, A, explain each the significance of each of these attributes and each of these facets. And B, uh, take our viewers through how long it's taken you and your team to basically get to this point. First thing, of course, is, uh, you know, launching from our own private launch pad. Uh, this means a lot from two aspects. One is from the policy and framework standpoint. You know, there's, there's so much clarity in space policy today compared to when it how it was when we started, wherein, you know, nothing was, you know, put in, uh, you know, set in stone. Uh, and to the point where now we're able to actually have our own launch pad, which is synced completely with ISROs, you know, other control systems and so on. And we're able to get a launch done. In the long run, this means we can be a lot more independent. Of course, we'll always have to be, you know, approved by InSpace and working with ISRO safety teams. But our launch cadence can be determined completely by our customer needs and so on. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Second, I think from a technology standpoint, of course, uh, we've been testing this 3D printed engine, a single piece rocket engine. We have a patent on this. But to actually fly it makes a... You know, a whole lot of difference. It proves that the technology can also, you know, uh, actually power things to orbit. So I think from that, it's, uh, from that standpoint, it proves an entire case study that we have on how 3D printed engines are the way to go. Uh, other than that, I think this is also the first semi-cryogenic flight from India. Uh, again, I think this is a very interesting fuel combination. It's a clean fuel combination. It's one of the fuel combinations that took, you know, humans to the moon and it's been used since then. But to use it with what we call as aviation turbine fuel, and uh, liquid oxygen, basically uh, industrial grade, you know, uh, uh, propellants and actually get a flight out of it and get the required performance out of it was a, its own journey. So I think this also allows us to basically have readily available propellants to get the launch done. And finally, last but not least, a lot of small things as well, right? The avionics architecture was driven by Ethernet and so on. Uh, things that have not been attempted directly in India before. So all of these things are driven towards our bigger vision. Uh, like you mentioned from a previous conversation, right? The ability to actually go and say, going to any point in space should be as easy as going to any point on Earth. That is what all of this is geared to. How much of a leap have you taken in being able to achieve the vision that you've set out? What do these breakthroughs mean for space tech, for the industry, for the sector? Um, I think it addresses two key points for us. One is the ability to launch anywhere. This is a mobile launch pad setup that we launched from. So, and you know, being able to launch from any authorized launch pad in India is an important aspect of you know uh, getting anyone to space at any time. So this got uh, you know validated here. Also, making rocket engines quickly is one of the key factors in making launches you know more frequent. If you look at what makes launches you know come at a certain slow frequency today the biggest contributor to that is the time it takes to make a rocket engine in our single piece engine we are able to get an entire engine done in 72 hours 72 so hours. that allows us to make rocket engine yes uh, so because the entire engine is 3d printed in one shot there is no human interference in the process okay and so since we are able and we we do this in our own rocket factory there's a lot of end-to-end -end control in how we're able to get this out quickly so being able to make rockets quickly and being able to launch them from any authorized launch pad, I think these are things that are going to make space accessible to everyone. So, so Srinath, just, two or three two miles just miles. for context, you said that it took you 72 hours to do the engine on account of the 3D printing process that you've put in place uh, for Agniban. What would it have otherwise taken you? Um, it depends. I think it usually takes about 12 to 16 weeks if you do it the conventional way. Uh, I mean, I'm generalizing here a little but yeah it's about that time frame three to four months to make an engine okay so i think that we have completely cut short to you know at max a week or so 
take me through where things currently stand in the efforts uh, to uh, amplify the momentum that we're already seeing. So, Shireen, um, uh, in the last two, three years, we have really seen a tremendous uh, effort that is being put in by uh, the, the young startups and also the older companies that are engaged in this space uh, in, in various aspects. And what I am most happy to see uh, in case of Agnikul and in uh, many other uh, startups that I would name uh, is that they're not just taking what ISRO has done and replicating it. They are moving the technology forward. So just like what we talked about here, the 3D single piece, 3D printed engine. First time it has been done for semi-cryogenic. This is something that ISRO hasn't done so far. Uh, and it's so happy. I'm so happy to see that the companies like Agnikol are doing those kind of things. Uh, and similarly, if you look at, say, Pixel, for example, they have a high sp hyperspectral uh, imaging uh, that they're developing. They will be launching a Firefly satellite of 18, uh, 18 uh, satellites constellation. Uh, Brigantra are doing new things. I'm sure they've been on your program also uh, in terms of uh, SSA, uh, space situation and uh, awareness. Uh, and so is Galaxy, so is Ruai Space. So each of these companies in a specific field that they have chosen, uh, are moving the technology forward and bringing and new things and making the Indian space sector uh, kind of technologically advanced, uh, adding to what ISRO has done, and also making it available at a lower cost because of technology they have put in. So just like uh, Srinath mentioned that uh, doing this engine in uh, 72 hours compared to what may be two months of effort uh, allows him to be able to turn around very quickly and meet the customer requirements at a very short notice. Uh, and that will make his uh, launch vehicle very attractive uh, to global customers to come here in India and launch their satellites from these vehicles. In the last two, three years, we have seen number of startups uh, grow to about 200. Uh, and uh, equally important, the investment that's coming in uh, is, uh, is very large. Now we have crossed $140 million uh, in the last year. And we hope that with FDI will cross, uh, will go beyond that uh, this year. We are going to take a break here on Young Turks, but when we return, we continue our conversation about the big launch of Agni Kul, creating a milestone for India.